Okay. Um, actually, the title given to me is uh, the correct way to build master, right? And I, I you notice that I changed a bit, and uh, because I believe there is no um, uh, what do you call that uh, correct way or uh, in that in that uh, manners, and I believe that uh, uh, there's no right or wrong way, and uh, there's different different uh, people using different methods, and. What I'm trying to share is that uh, I'm just trying to share the principle or the basic principle about uh, muscle building and exercise in general. Okay, so uh, let's go into it. Okay. Uh, now we know that, uh, you know, exercise actually is the scientific study of human movement, uh, you know, to maintain and uh, improve our physical uh, fitness. Eh? Okay. Um, sorry. Now, actually, uh, in the modern days, uh, a lot of athletes uh, with modern training, they already have an image what they can do, what, what they should do and how they can do it, you know. Uh, uh, in, in general, uh, I believe that most of the athletes now, when you compare about 30 to 40 years ago, can uh, most of the athletes with the recent technology and knowledge uh, quite easily can, uh, you know, overtake whatever the performance 40, 50 years ago. Okay, of course, uh, we, when it comes to exercise uh, and muscle building, we always uh, stress the importance of uh, genetic, you know, we know that uh, you know the human type. You have uh, you know the body shape, like for example, endomorph, uh, uh, mesomorph, and the uh, ectomorph. Here, yeah? uh, usually those uh, uh, mesomorph and uh, uh, ectomorph is quite easier to train, whereas endomorph, which means the thin type, uh, so they find it very difficult to build muscle. Actually, okay. Of course, some genetic. Uh, uh, play a very important role in muscle building and also exercise. Uh, some people, they are born, naturally they are born with certain capability to perform. Uh, for example, like, you know, the sprinter, Usain Bolt, he, by nature, genetically, he has the ability to, for sudden bursts of energy. Okay. Whereas uh, some people, uh, for example, like marathon runner, they are born to to go for this type of uh, endurance uh, kind of sports or exercise. Or some like, you know, the Uso, uh, or, or, or Sumo wrestler, they, they are born to be that big size, right? You can't ask a very thin fella to go and, you know, train their body to become a sumo wrestler. It will be very difficult, okay? Now, but of course, the most important is still, I believe, when it comes to exercise and uh, muscle building, uh, training is still the most important thing. Yeah? You have to have persistent and disciplined training uh, in order to achieve the target. Uh, men tend to see themselves uh, younger, leaner, more muscular image when they look at the mirror. Whereas women, they tend to, when they look at the mirror, they, they tend to see themselves being uh, overweight, obese, uh, a lot of uh, un, uh, what got, unsighted uh, uh, protrusion in the bodies, uh, which they don't like, right? So that's the difference between female, uh, woman, and men, right? Uh, so now what we men need to do is that we need to just put this mind image into more realistic sense of what we're really dealing with or what our achievable goal, goals is. So of course, uh, had to be realistic, lah. Yeah, and uh, we know that you know, uh, bodybuilding exercise, uh, you know, is uh, the best way. Uh, the best way to uh, anti age, uh, and there's never too late to train your body. And doesn't mean that, for example, if you have, uh, you know, you're already 50, 60, you cannot train your body. Even though you reach a certain age, you still can train your body 
And in fact, there's no stopping, not, nothing to stop you. And even though you, are, you reach a certain age, when you start doing exercise, when you start doing muscle building, in actual fact, you are protecting your body from aging. Right? This, I always tell that, you know, smoking kills about 5 million people uh, in a year. Smoking and smoking-related diseases lah, yeah? kill about 5 million people in a year. But do you know that every year, about 5.3 million deaths are related to inactivity. Yeah? Okay, so and by just doing a bit of exercise, actually we can prevent, yeah? by just doing a bit of exercise, uh, we can prevent at least 1.3 million of death. Yeah? So something that very simple to do, but yet it's so difficult. And this has been proven by many, many studies, uh, not only in Canada, actually it's in everywhere. Uh, also people have proven that, you know, by doing exercise and uh, building muscle, actually improve cognitive functions and psychological well-being uh, in older people, uh, including you know, patients with uh, Alzheimer's or dementia, by just doing exercise alone, can help them to preserve whatever cognitive function that's left or slow down, slowing down the whatever disease process that is happening. Right? I always tell my patients, you know, actually the best way uh, to take care of your body is to exercise because exercise is your medicine. By doing exercise, you reduce the risk of getting heart disease, stroke, diabetes, or hypertension. Right? So just doing exercise, you can avoid, to, you know, uh, people say, you know, take one apple a day will, you know, will prevent you from seeing the doctors, right? But I think it's the more appropriate will be exercise actually. By doing regular exercise will prevent you from seeing your doctors actually. So exercise can help you to prevent uh, a lot of other uh, cancer related diseases, huh? colon cancer, breast cancer, and even in patients with confirmed cancer, for example, like breast cancer, uh, you know, late stage cancer, late stage breast cancer, by doing exercise, actually you can reduce the mortality and reduce the risk of recurrence. So it's so simple to do, yet so uh, difficult, but the benefit is really, really uh, uh, extraordinary. Well, and if you look at the, what WHO recommends us uh, to do, right? Uh, actually, WHO come up with the guidelines that, you know, every adult, should do at least 150 minutes of moderate intensity aerobic physical activities throughout the week, or do at least 75 minutes of vigorous intensity aerobic physical activity throughout the weeks, or in equivalent combination of moderate or vigorous intensity activities. In other words, they, what we're trying to say is do some exercise. Yeah? Okay, uh, aerobic activity should be performed. Uh, about at least 10 minutes duration. What do you mean by aerobic activity? Now, aerobic activity means uh, when you're doing the exercise, you don't, uh, you know, you still can breathe like, you know, uh, you can feel breathless, but you still can, you still can breathe normally. You, you haven't reached a stage that you cannot catch your breath or all your joint is so painful uh, that you cannot go anymore. In other words, aerobic activity is important because when we do exercise, our main purpose, one of the main purpose is to burn fat, right? In order to burn fat, you need oxygen. So if you do exercise there until a stage that you cannot breathe, you cannot take in oxygen, meaning you are doing anaerobic exercise. So that's not as beneficial as aerobic activities. So in other words, the WHO encourages to you want better result, better benefits, do longer, more exercise, right? Okay. So muscle strengthening activities should be done involving major muscle group on two or more days in the week. In other words, besides aerobic exercise, you also need to do a bit of, uh, uh, what do you call it, strength training. Yeah. In other words, train your muscle or bodybuilding cow kind of exercise. Okay. So now I'm going to, you know, about the basic principle of uh, muscle building or basic principle of exercise. Uh, you must understand, exercise is universal, means everybody can do. Yeah, there is no such thing as, uh, you know, uh, 
because you have this condition or because of this environment, you cannot do. Actually, even you know, for the past uh, two months plus, even during MCO, we cannot get, uh, you know, go out from our, our house to do outdoor exercise. Actually, you can do, still can do exercise indoor. And even though, for example, you have diabetes, you have hypertension, even though you have heart disease, actually, you still can do exercise. It's just that you have to be selective what type of exercise you can do. In other words, everybody can do exercise, right? Okay. Two, number two, the, okay, another thing is when you do exercise, we prefer you, you to do the, the, the full range of motion exercise. For example, uh, let's say you do your bicep, right? Bicep, yeah. Make sure you curl your bicep all the way, right? Not only halfway. Uh, why is it so important, the range of motion? Because by doing the full range of motion, you are training the full length of the mus muscle. And study also, study also has proven that by doing a full range kind of exercise, uh, the risk of injury is lower compared to you do half range, right? So uh, remember, as far as possible, depends on the group muscle that you're training, make sure you do the full range of the motions. Two, it must be balanced and symmetry. Don't too focus on certain group muscle only. For example, I, think, I know a lot, of, a lot of guys, they are very obsessed about six pack, right? They only train their, their, their abdominal muscle and they forget about you know, their back muscle. And you must understand that the abdominal muscle helps to flex. To extend our body, we need our back muscle. Right, right, the spinous erectus muscle. If you just train the abdomen only, you you didn't take care of your back muscle, right? Your body, uh, what do you call that? You you the posture will not be balanced. Okay, so remember you have always have the left and the right. Uh, a lot of time those right-handed, you know, you do a lot on the right hand, you forget about your left hand. And remember, you have the front growth muscle, you also have the back growth muscle, and the up and down means your upper body and also your leg. Yeah? We don't want you to just train your upper body, yeah? become Mr. Upper Body. Right? And then your lower limb, you never train. It's just like two stick. Big body with two stick. Right? Doesn't look good, right? And not balanced as well. And uh, you know, by doing just, you know, by training your lower limb, also very helpful, especially in elderly, yeah? and uh, very helpful in preventing them from fall. Yeah? You know, falling down when you, when, you know, we know that in older people, when they fell down, when they fall down, there's, there's higher risk of injury, higher risk of, uh, 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 what I call that, fractures, okay? And always work on the weak point first. For example, uh, what, what do you mean by weak point first? For example, uh, let's say uh, bicep tricep. You notice that your tricep are weaker than your bicep. Then you train your bicep uh, tricep first, because if you you let's say your bicep is strong, you train too much your bicep. By the time you're ready to train your tricep, you already have no energy to train your tricep. So always go for the weak group of muscle first, right? For example, uh, to you train your tricep, then only train your bicep, right? train your back muscle, or then only you train your abdomen, okay? And, uh, and when it comes to specifically, when it comes to uh, building muscle, uh, uh, the principle of uh, training must be that, you know, every exercise that we do must have an effect. That means you must be able to see the effect, the outcome, okay? Yeah? For example, we call it principle of overload. Uh, in order to build muscle, you must train your muscle to, to use your muscle, to train your muscle up to a level. Overload means a level that your muscle cannot take it anymore. For example, when we do training for bicep, for example, you start maybe about 5 kilo, then you can do, do or no problem, 10, 15 times. Then you increase it. Uh, 10 kilo, uh, 12.5 kilo, 15 kilo. Maybe by the time you reach 15 kilo, you realize that you can only do seven. By the time eight, you, you find it very difficult. Uh, you need to support. And that's uh, what we call overload. Because you, you have to reach a level that you cannot go anymore. You, you can go, but only a few times. Uh, and you need people to support you. 
Uh, that's why when doing training, we always encourage you know uh, you people to uh, there to supervise you or support you. And of course, this come to issue with uh, you know uh, this current situation with COVID nineteen, right? Uh, of course, maybe I share a bit uh, on, on this uh, you know at the end of the talk. Uh, and then principle of specificity, uh, you must train a specific muscle group uh, in especially different day, train different group of muscle, uh, different group of muscles. Okay, I will talk about more later in this. And then also principle of progressions. In other words, you cannot be training, start training today and then tomorrow you see results. The progression must be gradual, slowly, slowly. Right. Okay. And in fact, by doing grad having gradual progression, your risk of getting injury also will be lower. Right. Same thing. Man and woman is the same. Must progress gradually. That's why uh, when it comes to exercise and weight loss, a lot of people want to see result after one month. Actually, yes. Of course, there are so many things that you can take. There's so many, you know, uh, weight losing agent that you can take. But those are just temporary. Exercise is the own, one of the only methods that you can help your body to maintain your shape and your weight in the long run. Okay, principle of variation means, uh, you know, you do same group of muscle, but you do different, different type of exercise. For example, for the first two weeks, uh, you do, you know, uh, uh, maybe using dumbbell, right? And then after that, uh, two weeks later, then you maybe you're using uh, bars or things like that, you know. It means you, you have to do it with uh, varieties, uh, variations, different, different method of exercise for that particular group of muscles. And I mentioned just now, principle of balance. Everything you do, you must balance up. For example, you train your bicep, you must train your tricep. You train your abdomen, you must train your back muscle. Principle of reversibility means um, when we train certain group muscles, if you stop training, the muscle will reverse back to the original shape. Right? So in other words, what we're trying to say here is that uh, whatever bo body changes that you, you develop from exercise can be reversible. Because sometimes when you sit, some, especially you know in uh, ladies, uh, when they train, 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 overtrain, then they develop certain figures, a certain shape. Maybe they don't like it, right? right? Or maybe they, you know what, when they reach a certain stage of their life, they want to be more feminine. Actually, by changing your exercise, changing your intensity, the whatever changes in your body can be reversible. Okay? And uh, this is how you're going to do it. Uh, we call it fit as a fit principle. We, I encourage uh, you know my patients to do exercise, uh, you know every other day, right? Okay, and how about the intensity? Uh, like I mentioned just now, you must be able to do it until a stitch, you know, yeah, that you sufficient to generate overload. Okay, of course some uh, some based on their uh, you know uh, their heart rate. And, uh, and also the rate of exertions. What does it mean? For example, uh, if you, based on your age, there's a certain formula to calculate your different age group, uh, you, you have different uh, maximum heart rate. Uh, for example, let's say 50, 50 years old, we calculated your maximum heart rate is about 150 to 160. That means by the time you reach the heart rate, yes, you achieve your target. So, do you feel? Do you feel you are very severely exist, uh, exerted? Uh, then you have to slow down. Okay? Uh, how about time? Like WHO recommendations, actually minimum should be uh, 20 minutes. Right? Uh, of course, the best one would be about 30 to 40 minutes. Right? And duration, duration uh, exercise is more important uh, than intensity. Uh, well, of course, in very hectic lifestyle, very, very busy lifestyle. Sometimes you have no choice. You have to do a short intensity exercise, right? Then uh, better than you're not doing any exercise. Uh, and uh, remember I told you the type of exercise, right? 
aerobic in nature using large group of muscle like jogging, those exercises is very, very good. Of course, then you need to do also resistance training. Res resistance training means like those muscle building. Eh? And don't forget about a stretching exercise. Yeah? A lot of time we combine together, you know, uh, when you have the time. Uh, for example, like myself, I usually spend a bit of time doing my aerobic exercise. For example, running on a treadmill, 15 minutes, 20 minutes on the treadmill. Then after that, followed by, uh, you know, resistance training. And uh, when I have the time, by right, I should end with uh, stretching exercise. That will be a complete uh, exercise. Uh, then it will be much, much better, much, much, much uh, effective your exercise your bodybuilding is. And like just how we mentioned, right? Uh, the, you must have a target, different, different group of muscles. So usually I divide them into, you know, uh, the usually I combine the neck and shoulder together. And then of course, uh, your arms, upper, lower back, chest, the core, and the lower extremities. Um, you know, the, the shoulder exercise, your shoulder exercise is uh, quite prone to injury. That's why uh, we encourage uh, uh, patients to do full range motion of exercise, right? And try to go slow, yeah? Like for example, lateral raise, right? Lateral raise, you try to go slow up, then down. Sometimes when you do too fast, then you're prone to get injury. Then your arm exercise means your bicep and your triceps, right? And, and then your, your upper and your lower back. Okay, the chest exercise. Chest exercise, uh, you know, there's many, many types of chest uh, what do you call that? Your elevated uh, pen press, uh, flat pen press, and also uh, head down pen press, right? What is to train your chest? Usually a lot, of a lot of patients, a lot of people, a lot of young people like to train the chest because this is one of the places that uh, very fast they can see results. Uh, but as I said, don't just only uh, you know, train the chest and forget about others. And then, of course, your core exercise. Remember all your core exercises, eh? right? Uh, you know, your abdomen, your lower back, yeah, all this also important. And uh, especially for, you know, uh, men, uh, you don't forget to train your lower extremities because a lot of young people, young men, I see them, they have spent too much time training their upper body they totally forgotten about their lower body, right? And in actual fact, you know the lower body is very important. Why? Because when you train your lower extremities, for especially for men, uh, that will help you to boost up your testosterone level. Okay. So, and for ladies, of course, when you train your lower extremities, you actually also training uh, your your backside, yeah, your butt, sir, uh, will become firming, especially. So don't neglect your lower extremities. Okay, so then we come to you know uh, the importance of nutrition and supplement in exercise. Um, we know that, right? An average woman need about two thousand calories a day, and an average man yeah, need about uh, two thousand uh, five hundred uh, calories to maintain. And if you want to lose weight, then you have to maintain your body weight at uh, cal calorie intake to 2,000 for men and 1,500 for, uh, for women, eh? okay? You want to lose weight. But when you come to build muscle, you require positive energy balance. In other words, you must take in more calories than you burn. Otherwise, you won't be able to, 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 burn, uh, to, to build your muscle. So we need about 2,800 calories extra calories to build one pound of muscles, right? Many because you want to support the protein tone turnover, right? This explains to, you know, uh, building up about, you know, uh, slowly building up about 227 grams of muscle each week, right? And you need to consume extra 250 to 500 uh, calories per day. Now, this is just a range, yeah? uh, in other words, for example, if you are big size, big size fella, you know, maybe you take extra 500 calories per day. But if you are thin fella, you increase too much of calorie intake, the calorie will be converted into fat, right? So all have 
in other words, this, this, you have to balance out and judge based on your, your body type, your kind of exercise, uh, you know, uh, your, your body shape, okay? Um, of course, the most important feel for our body, right, in terms of uh, 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 even normal daily living or especially more important if you are doing bodybuilding, yeah, uh, your important feel will be your carbohydrate. Usually, we encourage uh, your carbohydrate to consist of 50 to 55% of your total calories. And if we know that one bread of carbohydrate gives you about 4.2 uh, calories. And always, always go for complex carbohydrate. Okay? Because they are nutrient dense, they are, have all the important dietary fibers, and they usually don't make your sugar level to go too high and they are slower to digest. It means you don't get hungry so fast. And they are very good pre-exercise food. So, try by all means, stop your refined sugar. In other words, go for complex carbohydrate. Right? And you know that, for example, you can see all the complex, complex carbohydrate uh, that we, we take. And then all the simple carbs are the type of carbohydrates that we, a lot of young people like to eat. Uh, especially the fast food. So try uh, to limit your intake of all this uh, processed food. Yeah? We call it processed food means when you look at the shape, you cannot tell where, what are they made from. For example, like uh, you know, burger, you look at the burger, you, you don't know that it's, they're made from chicken, right? right? So what we try to ask patient to take is to take real food, right? You would take potato, you eat the potato, yeah? Okay? Uh, you eat fruits, you eat the fruits, right? You don't eat uh, whatever they process, they become something else. And when it comes to fat, fat is also very important because fat are, are very concentrated form of energy. Uh, compared to carbohydrate, is 4.2. This is 9 calorie per gram. And uh, we always tell patients or uh, you know, uh, those going for exercise, you must balance up your uh, fat. All the fat are actually important. Monosaturated fat, polyunsaturated fat, and saturated fat are important. Right? And then you must consist about 10% of each. By all means, try to avoid trans fatty acid. Yeah, for example, like margarine, partially hydrogenated vegetable oil, deep, fr deep fried chips, and fast food. You see, all those um, uh, you know, cooking oil, when you cook them over a period of time for too long, their nature change and they become trans fatty acid. Now, we know that trans fatty acid is the main reason why uh, people develop heart disease or any actually a lot uh, a lot of other problems like atherosclerosis not 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 because of your cholesterol the main things that we are worried is your trans fatty acid you know, by all means try to reduce or stop taking any food that contain trans fatty acid these are the saturated uh, fat usually animal fats are saturated fat all right so they are also, they are important yeah? more than saturated Saturated fat, usually from your beans or seeds. Avocado is a good source of uh, uh, monounsaturated fat. Uh, olive oil, you know, all these are good fat. Polyunsaturated fat, uh, especially from uh, fish, yeah? those, especially those oily fish, like salmon, tuna. These are a very good fat, very, very important, uh, very, very healthy fat. Okay? And these are the main source of our trans fatty acid. And I strongly discourage you all to take this. Right? If you want to take care of your body by stopping this uh, processed food or fast food, actually it help your body a lot. Then we come to the most important component, uh, protein. Yeah, in terms of, uh, in terms of uh, calorie level, protein is just the same like carbohydrate. They are not very high content. Uh, but protein are very, very important because they are the building block, uh, building block for growth and cell replacement. 
they are the main uh, component for your muscles. So, and we know that protein are basically contain of uh, 12 amino acid, uh, 28 type of amino acid. Uh. 12 are non essential and 8 are essential. Essential means what? Means you can only get it from food. You cannot, your body cannot make it uh, yourself. You have to get it from food. So you have to make sure you, you, you get this uh, essential amino acid from your food. And the requirement is about 0 0.8 to 1 gram per kilo body weight. But if you are doing muscle training or bodybuilding, or you are very, exercise very, very regularly, your protein requirement will increase from 1.5 to 2 gram a day, right? So, and uh, there's some studies show that, you know, if three meals of equal to 30 gram of protein per meal have maximum protein synthesis. In other words, you need, you need, uh, you need to increase your protein intake in order to build muscle. And a lot of people worry, uh, you know, uh, whether um, taking high protein diet will cause any kidney disease or not. Well, in a normal people, if you have uh, normal kidney functions, normal liver functions, by taking high protein diet won't cause you to have any diseases. Yes, as long as you take enough fluid and you have normal kidney function. So there's not an issue in, in taking high protein diet. And it's been shown that you know, by taking lean protein 15 to 20 minutes before, during, within one hour of workout will help uh, improve muscle gain. Okay, so eat protein with each meal to boost your muscle mass. Right, so whether to take protein before, during, or after, there are so many, many studies, uh, you know, um, uh, to compare the effect. What I'm trying to say is that as long as you have take enough protein, whether before, after, or during, all will be helpful to, for muscle gain. Of course, there's some study proof that, you know, actually by taking before, your workout is better than after. And some people believe that after you work out, uh, we encourage you to take a bit of a, you know, a carbo, in, carbo dense diet. Because uh, when during workout, you burn away all the, uh, you know, your carbohydrate or sugar, yeah, glucose from your muscle. So you need to replace back all this energy source for your muscle. So uh, that's why some people believe after exercise, you should take carbo-dense diet. Now this is all just guidelines, uh, guidelines. And uh, you know, uh, one piece of chicken breast will give about uh, 35 to 40 grams of protein. Uh, and I think it's easier for you to remember, you know, one egg is about, about 6 grams of protein. All right. So you yeah, remember just how we talk about, you know, for active person, you need about 2 grams of protein per kilo, right? Let's say if you, for a lady, let's say you are 50 kilo and you want to maintain your muscle or you want to build some, some muscle, you need to take about, you know, uh, 100 gram of protein a day. So, you know, one, one egg only give you about six, six gram, right? One piece of chicken breast give you about 40, you know, 30 to, 35 to 40. It means you need to take at least two pieces of chicken breast plus other source of protein. So the, in other words, this may give you some guidelines. Actually, a lot of time we overestimated the protein that we take. Actually, a lot of time we, do, we are not taking enough. We are not taking enough protein, uh, right? So uh, this is just to give you a guideline. One piece of rib eye give about 22 gram protein, you know? And uh, you ask me, Tao, Protein, which one is better? Now, there's a study believe that uh, egg and chicken protein are easier to digest compared to uh, uh, cows, compared to pork, compared to uh, goats, uh, meat. So chicken meat are much, much easier to uh, digest. Okay. And this is just to compare, uh, you know, uh, per 100 gram, per 100 gram of uh, each meat. So you look at that, you know, uh, definitely chicken will be have higher protein. 
uh, chicken and uh, fish eh, uh, compared to the, the rest beef bison okay so so it's not a it's not a bad choice you know eat more fish and chicken actually and of course in those people that uh, very strict uh, vegans of course there you can go for plant-based protein source as well and uh, um, but there's some studies showing that uh, in terms of muscle building um, animal based protein is still much much better than uh, you know uh, plant-based protein there's a lot of time uh, in those uh, you know very strict uh, vegans uh, sometimes we need to discuss with them whether they, they, is it okay for them to take some protein powder. So, uh, because, uh, yeah, of course, the protein powder source of protein is still from animal. So, but in terms of better results of bodybuilding, sometimes you have no choice to go for animal source of protein. Now, there are different, different types of protein in, in the market. Uh, when it comes to bodybuilding, I always encourage my patient to take whey protein because there are higher biological value, there are higher concentration of essential uh, amino acid, and they have their uh, lactose removed. And you must understand, if you take your protein drink, after you take your protein, you always have diarrhea. Maybe the protein drink that you take are not whey protein, and maybe they also contain lactose because it's quite common for especially Asian to have lactose intolerance. That's why uh, I, don't, I don't encourage, I don't encourage, uh, uh, you know, especially you are, you are really a doubt, eh? I don't encourage you to drink so much of uh, milk or dairy products. If you really want to build muscle, just specifically go for whey protein. Right? Um, you know, by drinking a lot of this cow's milk, sometimes you end up with more problem. Why? Because you develop lactose intolerance, you have diarrhea every time you drink all this milk and, uh, and then after that, in the long, long run, you cause you to have a, a gut injury or, and then develop you call leaky gut syndrome. So we, that's why, as far as possible, uh, you know, you, if you need to take uh, extra protein but you don't want to get from the food, you go for whey protein. Yeah? Okay? This is an example the brand of whey protein. It's not saying that which one is better, but this one is better than other brand. No. I just want to tell you, when you go for whey protein, when you go for protein, always look for whey. Or even better, whey isolate. Yeah, you look at the, you know, the side pack and nutrition, they have whey isolate. Right? Whey isolate uh, means what? They contain leucine and carnitine because these are very important uh, uh, amino acids. Uh, they are the essential amino acid. Uh, naturally, uh, for example, like leucine, they are high in meat, eggs, oat, beans, and soy. And they help uh, in the study, they, it's proven that if your protein intake contains very high leucine, you can be helpful for muscle production. And also, they can help you to prevent diabetes mellitus. Eh? So, that's why in a lot of uh, good quality of whey protein, they always add in. Uh, this isolate amino acid, okay, and another one is carnitine. In fact, red meat, dairy products, fish, asparagus, and avocados, and uh, carnitine is very helpful, especially yeah, especially you want to take this protein to help you to burn away your fat, burn away those stubborn fat. So that's why I usually advise patients to go for whey isolate protein right they are more expensive but they are much much better much more uh, effective uh, another isolate is, uh, isolate amino acid uh, beta hydroxy methyl butyrate and uh, so it's a metabolite of essential amino acid leucine uh, like remember i told you right leucine help you to build muscle yes because hmb increase rate of protein synthesis and slow down your protein breakdown so in other words, uh, you, you form muscle faster, but you don't burn them uh, too fast. So they increase functionality, strength, and lean body mass. Okay? And other very, very useful uh, supplements like uh, omega-3 fatty acid, 
And uh, now, omega-3 uh, fatty acid, usually you can buy from any pharmacy or any outside uh, shops. So you can go for uh, omega-3 fatty acid. Usually, you, you get this fish oil, you look at them, they will write down there, you know, omega-3 fatty acid, which uh, either EPA or DHA. Okay. Now, here recommended is 3.6 gram daily. So that's why whenever you take fish oil, always look at the content. Where, what are the content? What is the, uh, what do you call it? The total number of uh, omega-3, you, you can calculate by combining DHA and EPA together. That will give you the total amount of DHA, uh, omega-3 inside that capsule. So usually I would ask my patient to take two to four gram a day, right? So make sure you look at the label. What is the combination of DHA and EPA? That must be at least two grams to four grams a day. And not only for a bodybuilding, uh, omega-3 fatty acid also is a cardiac protective. In other words, it can reduce the risk of getting heart disease by taking omega-3 fatty acid. Okay? Another important uh, amino acid is creatine. Yeah? It's found in fish and meat. It helps to maintain muscle mass and the strength, especially if you do a lot of high intensity kind of exercise. Okay, so these are sometimes you go to those uh, uh, nutritional uh, shops uh, or selling those shops selling nutritional products. They have just protein powder with just creatine alone, right? So you can buy that mixed together with your normal uh, uh, protein drink. And that's very helpful, uh, you know, to maintain your muscle mass. Other things that I encourage patients to take, like, uh, you know, the uh, other antioxidant nutrient, the trace element. And this time, a lot of time, you do need to take, because if you eat your balanced diet, a lot of time you have, you have enough uh, this antioxidant nutrient and trace element. For example, one of the things that are high, very high in all these uh, trace elements uh, the nuts, like Brazil nuts, like almond nuts, all these are very good source of all these uh, element, uh, trace elements. In fact, I will encourage you to take, uh, especially you know when you're hungry at night, instead of supper, eating uh, rice, noodle, things like that, you can eat nuts. Yeah? You can get some, buy some nuts from organic shops, and, and then you eat it. It's much, much healthier than you uh, eating nasi lemak at night, you know. Okay, now uh, I just want to share a bit on all this uh, anabolic steroid, right? And I noticed that you know a lot of, uh, especially uh, guys when they go for a gym, they want to see fast result. Uh, they turn to anabolic steroids. Okay, now basically anabolic steroids uh, are synthetic chemical compound that mimic male hormone testosterone. So in other words, they are not natural hormones, they are synthetic compounds. Uh, it, what is it, what is it, why is it important? Because yes, they have a shape look like testosterone. When you take it, they exert testosterone effect in your body. Because we know that for men, in order to build muscle fast, if your testosterone level is very high, you notice that your, your muscle building capacity will be higher. But the problem is, this synthetic chemical compound or anabolic steroid, after you take it, your body will have problem metabolize them. They will accumulate in your body. And uh, yes, they accumulate in your body, that's why you find that your muscle building is more effective. Right? But the problem is, that means your body cannot clear away all this uh, synthetic uh, uh, testosterone. So after prolonged use, uh, after prolonged use, there will be a lot, a lot of problems, a lot of health issues in your body, right? And for example, you see them from top to toe, right? You can see all the problems with anabolic steroids, right? Uh, you know, you, you get bold. I mean, uh, hair loss, in other words, hair loss, yeah? You get severe acne problems in your face and back. And these are not the normal acne. These are those resistant acne, right? And uh, you have you develop 
express uh, or we call it gynecomastia in a male. Right? So it's unusual, it's abnormal. And after long term of eating uh, a, a steroid, it will cause you to have liver damage. Right? And uh, of course, uh, in men, after long term, we worry about you know, infertility. We worry about shrinkage of testes. We worry about uh, prostate cancer. So these are the things that uh, you know uh, you have to watch out. Whereas in in a woman, we know that if you take too much of anabolic steroid, your you have reduced breast size, you have enlarged clitoris, you have increased facial hair and body hair, your voice will also change, and then definitely your menses will go haywire. In other words, long term usage of anabolic steroid will damage your body. So by all means, try to stop it. No doubt, initially when you take it, you feel good, you feel so powerful, you feel so strong. But after a while, you find that your body is actually addicted to it. You can't stop, you can't stop using it. You have to use it. So that's a problem. Another thing is that also, if you want to do bodybuilding, try to stay away from alcohol. Because alcohol are empty calories. They have no nutritional value, they have no trace mineral, they only have energy. In other words, after you drink it, they convert into energy. If you don't use it, what happens to your energy? You become fat. Right? Okay? That's why you see a lot of drinkers, they have all this big belly. Eh? Because all the excess energy has nowhere to go. So they become visceral fat. Okay. Now I'm, talk, I'm going to talk about, about hormones. Just how I talk about anabolic, anabolic uh, steroid, right? Now, this is the hormones. Huh? This is not anabolic steroid. Hormones means we are talking about the hormones that are actually in your body. Yeah, for example, like uh, testosterone, DHEA, growth hormone, estrogen, and progesterone in female. All these are natural hormones in your body, right? And instead of using anabolic steroid, if you really need help, especially in terms of uh, improving your strength or in improving your sexual life, uh, you know, we encourage you to take this kind of hormone. These are natural hormones, right? And, uh, and naturally, it's in your body. And optimizing this hormone is one of the best way to maintain your muscle and also anti-aging, okay? So, because these are uh, natural hormones, uh, the difference between these natural hormones and those synthetic hormones and those drugs is that we need to uh, personalize these uh, natural hormones for different, different patients with different needs, right? There's no one drug fit all. So you must understand about, we're talking about hormones that are natural in your body. Okay, so I think that's about it. Uh, uh, just that uh, now, uh, maybe I will share a bit about, you know, now we come to uh, the end of MCO. I, I feel that, uh, you know, uh, and the gym will be opening up soon on, on the 15th. Uh, I'm not sure how my gym going to adjust to this uh, new normal. I suppose it's the same way. Uh, when you go to gym, you still need to do social distancing. You still need to wash your hand. You know, you still need to wear your mask. Now, that can be a problem. I, I'm not sure how the gym will do it. I suspect maybe uh, at any one time they only allow uh, they only allow certain number of participants. Uh, uh, people inside the gym, maybe, I think, right? Okay, so uh, I think it's uh, maybe I have yet to come see my, my, my gym uh, answer me how to go about uh, doing this. Uh, well, means uh, every time, every after every equipment use, you will need to Wipe it, you know, clean it with the uh, you know spirit, and uh, everybody have to wait for their turn to use certain equipment. So I think that's uh, you know that's that's very important. Okay. Uh, okay. I, I just answer some. Uh, I just answer some questions. Uh, okay. Now, how do you train your muscle group? Huh? Uh, the way I train is that every day I train, like you, uh, uh, Elaine asked me a question, every day I train 
a different muscle group a day. You are right. Yeah. Now, uh, depends on what is, what is your target. If you really, really discipline, you want to really uh, all your muscles to look good. Ideally, you should target your uh, each muscle group each day. For example, uh, I usually uh, you know uh, go to gym uh, four times a week, and then different day I train different muscle group. For example, you know, Monday I train my bicep triceps. Then after that, uh, I train my chest. Then after that, I train my shoulder. Then I, after that, I train my upper back, lower back. Okay. Now, in between, every day, after I finish this major group of muscle, I make sure I spend a bit of time doing my lower extremity. And yeah, that's how I do it. Okay. Because uh, I'm sure everybody have their, their work, their time, and sometimes it's just that not, uh, not enough time to do all the all you know the full range of uh, exercise of course provided you can go to gym every day now even so always listen to your body because you know that you know after you train your certain group of muscles your body need to recover now overtraining as sometimes you you you, you bring uh, no results for example, you know, listen to your body. If you, let's say, uh, after you do a training today, the next day you feel that you are so tired and uh, so painful, maybe you need a break. Then you have to wait another day or maybe in two days. Then you feel better, then only you start. Of course, when you never do any, any body training before, you go for serious training, of course, the first few days or the first week or two weeks, you're going to be very torturing, right? So you just have to be, you know, uh, endures, could be disciplined, you know, then after that, you become like a norm. Then you find that it's very easy for you to train the muscles. And you find that your body can recover faster. Now, that's why I, I encourage, uh, uh, I share with you about all this uh, isolate whey protein, all the supplement, because all this will help your body to recover faster. Right? For example, I... Uh, when I do training, I take whey isolate protein. Every day I take my omega-3, right? And uh, uh, I also use some supplements like uh, vitamin D. And I also use, I also use uh, magnesium. Why magnesium? Your magnesium is very good muscle relaxer. So especially after training, your muscle will be very tense, very overstretched. So a bit of magnesium will help you to relax. Uh, especially after every training, you have, uh, you have uh, uh, what do you call that, uh, you know, uh, muscle cramp, okay? Uh, taking everyday uh, whey isolate protein is not an issue, you know, because a lot of time we know that, uh, we know that by nature, our protein intake definitely not enough, one, okay? So especially you train every day, uh, you even need to take uh, um, all this uh, extra protein intake, okay? And uh, there's a question about uh, what they call SGH, right? It, the the growth hormone, right? Now, uh, I didn't share about growth hormone. Eh? Actually, growth hormone, um, I'm talking about the real growth hormone, eh? not, not taking protein to boost the growth hormone. Yes. We know that certain uh, essential amino acids can help you to boost up your growth hormone production. Yes, but they're only up to a certain level. They cannot replace growth hormone. If you really want to the full effect of growth hormone, you have to take the proper growth hormone, which is injection. From research, we know that growth hormone is one of the best, the best anti-aging the best uh, bodybuilding hormones in our body. And we know that when you, when you reach a certain age, uh, 30 years old onward, your growth hormone production starts to reduce. Right? That's why uh, if you want to maintain your muscle mass, want to maintain your, uh, your youth, youthful look, actually growth hormone injection is one of the, one of the good ways to go about it. And you can self-injection. 
And just then, you must remember, there's very easy to misuse growth hormone. In other words, you can use growth hormone to maintain your, your, uh, you know, your anti-aging level, your muscle mass level. But if you overuse it, right, it become like substance, uh, what do you call that, uh, uh, doping, like in, in those, uh, you know, Olympic, the uh, uh, hormones use high dose is considered as doping. Eh? So because it really boosts up your muscle, uh, you know, muscle mass production. Now, why we don't use it so often, uh, you know, in growth hormone? Uh, because the proper growth hormone injection ones uh, are very, very expensive. Yes, the growth hormone talk, you're talking about orally, actually, they are not actually growth hormone. They are the essential amino acid that stimulate our body to produce higher level growth hormone. This is very, very helpful in cert, up to certain level. Uh, in other words, let's say by nature, your growth hormone is a bit low, right? You, by taking all this essential amino acid, you boost up your growth hormone a bit. But that's it. You cannot replace the level like your injections, right? And um, usually the, the real good hormone is coming, uh, injections, we call it self-injections. Huh? Uh, you know, one tube uh, can last about maybe about a month or so. Uh, and every day you need only a micro international unit or something like that. You know, just one injection, that's it. Uh, but it's injection. It's, it's very effective anti-aging uh, treatment, actually. It's just that it's not popular in Malaysia uh, it's because, one, is super expensive. Mm. Two, is because uh, um, you need to inject every day. So uh, that's why uh, it's not so popular. And then we have other, other way of helping our patients, helping our client. You know, for example, uh, I didn't share in the slide, uh, mm. You know, by taking for, uh, you know, one of the natural hormones in our body, we call it 7-keto DHEA, that is also helpful for you to firm up your muscle, burn away your fat as well. And then they're natural. They're in your body, as, actually. Of course, but they are, uh, what do you call that? You need a doctor to prescribe for you. You cannot just simply buy over the counter. Okay? And they are usually natural hormones. Oh, they, are, they, are not, they are not supplements. So you need doctors to prescribe for you. Those are very, very helpful. So in other words, sometimes in some, some of the, my patients come and see me, uh, a lot of times when they say they're doing exercise, but they don't see if results uh, uh, on the, for, in the body, right? A lot of time, usually there are just a few, a, a few problems. One is actually maybe... Yeah, a lot of time, they overestimate the exercise they're doing. Right, a lot of people, a lot, of, you know, a lot of time we feel that I've done enough already. I, I, but actually, when you go through it, uh, you know, uh, they're doing not enough. And if you go to gym regularly, you will see, yes, a lot of people go to gym. But a lot of time, they doing what they either chatting in the gym or they're busy surfing in a gym, or the most of the time, they are not doing it correctly. So that's why uh, for those, especially you're a beginner uh, in the gym, right? I always encourage you to, to find a trainer to train you first, so that you have some idea, you have some idea, uh, you know, uh, whether you're doing it correctly or not. Otherwise, uh, you, you'll find that you're not, doing it right, you, you won't be able to uh, get results that you want. Okay? So, uh, any more questions? If no more questions, uh, I, I will end the uh, sharing now. Okay? Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay.